Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of Cons of Tarkir. Without further ado, let's get into this draft with a pretty nice Mythic Rare to start things off. The Ash Cloud Phoenix is a 4-mana four 4-1 four with flying. That is pretty recursive. Every time it dies, it comes back to the battlefield face down under your control, which you can then turn it face up later to shoot your opponent in the face for two. I guess you shoot yourself as well, which is kind of interesting. But you do flip it back up, and then when it dies once it's face up again, it will flip back onto the board face down. So if you can make it to the six mana that you need to keep flipping this up, it can sort of just like never die, which is pretty great on a really high power flyer like that. So we'll take the Ash Cloud Phoenix here, although there's other incredible options like the red removal spells, the Arc Lightning being my favorite for its ability to spread around kill a one toughness creature and a two toughness creature off just one card but arrow storm is really nice at well being as well because it can shoot your opponent's face for flexibility and warden of the eyes just a really good graveyard recursion kind of value play so really nice pack there but i'll roll with the mythic and take the ash cloud phoenix for pack one pick two we could take a frontier bivouac i think these triomes these three color lands are very high picks in this format because they have two enemy color pairs in them you're getting green blue and you're getting blue red out of this so if you're teamer green blue red it will be excellent if you're soul tie green blue black it will still be very useful and if you're jeskai blue red white it'll still be useful there so it ends up being useful in three of the five major archetypes in the format for mana fixing so it's actually a really flexible piece of mana fixing as compared to just like a two color land so I really like the Bivouac. I also really like the Aerostorm, as I was saying. Solid late game removal that can also just finish your opponent off if you shoot them in the face. Um, so I think that's a decent option, but might go for the Bivouac here. Hits multiple of the red archetypes to go with the Ash Cloud Phoenix, and it's excellent, excellent fixing in general. For pick three now, uh-oh, this pack's getting a little bit empty when it comes to red spells. Just an Inoc tracker, kind of a filler morph dork, but all the morph guards are fine. We've got a polluted delta, but this only fits in Sultai, blue, black, green. And we're probably not trying to head that way off in Ash Cloud Phoenix if we can avoid it. There's a Ruthless Ripper, really nice little death toucher. But the only archetype that's going to have red and black in it will be Mardu, red, black, white. We could go for Jeskai Wind Scout, and that would fit into blue, red, white, or blue, red, green. And it's just another nice little aggressive, evasive threat for trying to chip in a bunch of damage in the sky. Kind of similar to what the Ash Cloud Phoenix is potentially doing. I could see the Wind Scout actually being pretty sweet, pushing towards blue, red. Pick number four. We've got a Snowhorn Rider for a really beefy morph to flip up later. We've got a Thornwood Falls or a Tranquil Cove. The Thornwood Falls is a little more flexible because it works in green, blue, red, or green, blue, black, whereas Tranquil Cove only works in blue, red, white in this format. But yeah, I could see Fixing being decent here or the Snowhorn Rider. The Valley Dasher is okay if you have like a bunch of raid cards where you really want to make sure you're attacking, getting that trigger off of them. But the fact that it's forced to attack means it will eventually make a bad attack where you send your 2-2 two -two into their 5-5 five -five or something like that, which is uh, pretty disappointing later in the game. Yeah, Snowhorn Rider, Thornwood Falls I think are the good picks. I'll go for the Snowhorn Rider here. Don't know if I'm going to be in a blue-green deck yet. Pick number five, there's a Woolly Loxodon, just a massive morph creature. Glacial Stalker is also a pretty efficient one. Five mana, four or five when you flip it up. This one is a six mana, six, seven when you flip it up, so just big morph nonsense. Might be what we're doing, starting with Ash Cloud Phoenix and Snowhorn Rider. Just go for big morph, but at that point, we probably just want to take Thornwood Falls if we end up in a very morph-heavy deck. Get into the blue green red color trio make sure we have good fixing for it and we can pick up really decent really beefy morph creatures later the mana fixing is a little less expendable so we got to pick that up highly so i'll go for that here we'll take the thornwood falls this time be a little more uh, diligent about making sure that we have mana fixing in this deck and now we get a teamer charger or we get a glacial stalker here so the beefy late game morph card or the little aggro guy the two mana three one there 
Um, obviously, Teamer Charger is only going to be great if green is one of our heaviest colors in the deck, not if it's the splash. Usually, you're going to be two colors, and your third color is a little bit more of a splash than the other two, so you don't want like your two mana cards to be in the color that's the least represented in your deck. So this would be if we go like green, blue, and splash the red, which might not be horrible, because while we do have a double red card with the Ash Cloud Phoenix, because it has that morph ability, we can always drop it down turn three no matter what, and then just if we do manage to get the double red, it will be incredible. So we could go like green, blue, and splash in the red. Treat this as like uh, a three mana, two, two colorless card that sometimes just absolutely destroys. I think that could be fine. Now we take a Jeskai Wind Scout. Could take a Tranquil Cove in case we get pushed towards Jeskai, blue, red, white. But I'm going to stick to our blue, red, green for now. See if we can get some good teamer stuff going on. And there's a blue, red mana fixing land. Excellent, excellent pickup. I will take that over a Force Away, which is pretty nice. Bounce in this format. When you're playing against, well, multiple archetypes, really, if they have any big morphs that they drop on the board for three mana and then flip for like five mana later, they've invested so much mana into that that bouncing it for only two can be a huge tempo swing. And against Abzan decks that have that Outlast ability where they keep shoving counters onto their creature, being able to bounce it and get rid of all the counters they spent time getting is also really nice. So I do like Force Away a lot, but I also love me some mana fixing. And now's a great time to specify, I specifically love the mana fixing on the lands in this format because the banners are not great. Being three mana mana rocks is just not that efficient in draft and sealed. Sealed, I think they're more playable, but in draft, three mana for a mana rock is pretty awkward, especially in a format that has a million three mana plays because of the amount of morph cards. Oh wow, pick 10 arrow storm here? That's pretty sweet. Roll with that, I think. Over the Smoke Teller, just a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. Being the next best card. I uh, guess we take the Inoc Tracker. We've definitely got a morph theme going on here. So that's another little morph creature. Uh, this is all nonsense. We'll take an Active Treason that we probably won't play, and now we'll rare draft the highest rarity card as we move into pack number two, where we open up a Siege Rhino, which is super sad, because this card is really busted. Very, very powerful Abzan card. We're definitely not Abzan, though. We don't have any white or black in this deck yet, so unless we go five color, we don't really get to play around with the Siege Rhino. I guess the only thing that is on color for us... Yeah, pretty sad pack to open. Because the only thing on color for us in blue, red, green is Force Away, really. Which I did say I do like a good bit, but I don't think I would ever want to pick one it. So I guess I'll still take the Siege Rhino, and maybe we'll get incredible mana. But probably not. If nothing else, now I have a copy of Siege Rhino to play with in Historic Brawl and all that. Pack 2, pick number 2. White-blue duel. I'm getting towards the white sources for Siege Rhino. Horde Ambusher is a pretty nice one to flip up. Shut off a blocker. Not much here. I guess Hooting Mandrels is fine. We can run like one Delve card without any self-mill in the deck. And you'll naturally end up with some cards in your graveyard later, so it'll be a good draw later in the game. Nice and cheap. Might be able to cast it alongside another creature when you're delving a bunch of stuff out of your grave. The Mandrels could be fine. I don't think I take it this highly in Teamer, though. I guess I just take the Horde Ambusher, or we could Rare Draft Ugin's Nexus. This is a fun one to build around. Doesn't really do much of anything in Draft, though. So we'll grab the Horde Ambusher. Pack 2, pick 3. Not getting past a lot of good Teamer stuff from this direction. Or just not a lot's getting opened up. I mean, our, our pick one, we just didn't open anything good in Teamer. And then pick two, it's like only one card was taken out of the pack. So I don't know if this is a sign that Teamer is getting hard cut from this direction more than it is just a sign that Teamer cards are not getting opened right now, which is sad. Yeah, there's like a Crippling Chiller, the Super Filler Embodiment of Spring. Both of these actually pretty dang filler. I guess I do like the Mardu War Shrieker, even if you're not Mardu, even if you're not Red, White, Black. Just getting a red and two when you play this is pretty good. 
one red, two generic mana. Plop down a morph alongside it the turn you drop it. That can flood the board pretty quick. Take another arrow storm here. Big fan of that card. Pick number five. Highland game is fine. Treasure cruise is fine. Glacial Stalker's fine. Maybe splash in a little bit of white for a Weapon Master or a Warden of the Eye. I mean, we are only two cards deep into green. We could go Jeskai instead, but our fixing's a lot better towards the green. Two green duels here. I don't think I'm like full pivoting onto Jeskai here. I feel like Glacial Stalker's just very impressively satted for the mana cost. I'll go for the Glacial Stalker here. Now I'll take a Swift Water Cliffs over a bunch of filler. Looks like blue, red, splash, green, probably. So treat this as a th three mana choo choo most of the time, the Teamer Charger. What about our other morphs? We can treat this as a finisher kind of thing. This is a three mana card a lot. I guess both of these we just slam down on three and flip up later. But Ash Cloud Phoenix, we probably do want to cast on the front half every time that we can. So that we know it'll come back when it dies, versus if we play it face down and it dies, it will actually die. Okay. I think we stick deeper into blue-red, take a Jeskai Wind Scout here. We could just be like blue-red flyers, blue-red evasive threats, chip in for a bunch of damage and then finish our opponent off with a couple arrow storms. Like, sometimes we might only have to get them down to 10 to beat them. If we draw two arrow storms, that's 10 damage directly to their face. And here's a Winter Flame now, which is a great, great tempo play to stop them from blocking with one of their creatures and kill another one. So that can really help get early damage in. Towards, yeah, just lowering them enough for an arrow storm to finish them off is great. Pick 9, we wield the one card out of this pack that we wanted, which was the Force Away, so that was just a free Siege Rhino rare draft for the collection. You love to see it. And yeah, blue-red tempo aggro is actually looking pretty sweet here, to where we might not even have to splash green. Probably still will, like, I don't see why not. Um, but yeah, if we get enough good little aggressive blue and red creatures here, we could do some really spicy just... Flying damage, aggro tempo stuff. Just chip in a bunch and then finish them off with an arrow storm out of nowhere. Pretty big game plan. Alright, pack three, what do you got for us? A black rare. Um, The unblockable card would be fine towards this flying threat game plan, but so would the ice feather Aven. We are, again, probably splashing uh, some green in here. And by having some green, this will be another really solid flyer. Plus, it's a really solid tempo play flyer, where if you, we flip it up with the morph, we're bouncing their biggest blocker back to their hand, letting our other creatures get in. So we'll take the Ice Feather Aven. If we have access to green and blue mana on turn two, we should probably just always cast it as a 2-2 flyer and just start chipping away for damage whittling away at their life total as quickly as possible but the times that we don't immediately have the green the fact that we can still play it face down and then get pretty solid value when we flip it up is really nice so that seems really really solid for this deck already got triple wind scout probably take another swift water cliffs over a fourth copy and i think we're doing really good on again we have like five pretty aggressively statted flyers here Arrow Storms for finishers. I don't think we need another beefy finisher like a Snowhorn Rider, so I'm just going to take another Swift Water Cliffs for more fixing for the deck. Even more aggressive decks in this format can use a bunch of tap lands very freely, because we're not going to cast anything turn one. We're not going to cast very many cards turn two either, so turn one and turn two are just free turns to play tap lands. Turn four, we can play a three mana card and play a tap land. There's plenty of ways to fit tap lands into your mana curve without ruining your mana curve in this format really good warrior aggro stuff here with chief of the edge and horde chief not really anything for us we're not going to have a high enough non-creature count for quiet contemplation 
Yeah, pack's just bad. I'll just take Disdainful Stroke. I don't know if we'll end up running it. I think we're starting it in the sideboard, but maybe we will in the end. All right, we've got enough just flying damage to chip in with that I'm a really big fan of finishing things off with an Aero Storm. So we'll grab a third copy of that. Now for pick five, we can get a fourth Aero Storm, just all in on the Aero Storm game plan. There's an Avalanche Tusker too, which is really cool, because you can have this just eat your opponent's best creature. If they have four power on the board, this isn't that impressive, right? Because it's just going to kill whatever creature you want it to, but also die in the process, right? Because they'll just double block it. Block with whatever you force them to block with and another creature. Cool card, but I'm just going to go for the quadruple arrow storm deck today. That just sounds really fun to me right now. So we'll go for it. Here's another flyer. It's pretty overcosted, four mana for a 2-2 two -two flyer, but I guess it can do things. Swift Kick is really bad removal without beefy creatures, and we don't have a lot of those. We've got like one big green one. Um, I don't think I'm playing any of this. Maybe we actually are aggressive enough to go Valley Dasher with Quad Arrow Storm. Probably the most likely. Oh, five Arrow Storms. Probably better to take a Horde Ambusher than the fifth Arrow Storm. Two mana, two two on curve to start slamming in with. That can also shut off a blocker if we morph it later instead. Help get damage in. Yeah, second horde amateur for our third two mana card is probably better than a fifth arrow storm. If I do end up cutting Valley Dasher, which I think I will. Although here's another one because again I'm not going to play Quiet Contemplation today. Okay, not going to be a Goblin Slide deck either. toy around with a cancel or a two mana two one a leaping master or sambra are basically the same card in this deck because we don't have any white sources just take the cancel take the i already have one water world i don't think i'm playing because it is a lot of mana so i guess i'll take the two mana two one maybe start rare drafting some uncommons and I think we just have a deck already, since there's five lands in here. I guess this is 20 non-land cards in the deck right now. So we'll actually need to throw a couple more in. So I guess we do play the Valley Dashers just to get to enough non-land cards. I think this is our first deck that I'm actually like, I don't think this is an 18 land deck. <laughs> We've been drafting a lot of 18 land decks in the format. I think this is just your standard 17 not quite like a 16 land deck, though. Um, which is better, Disdainful Stroke or Cancel? So Cancel can counter Morphs, which is pretty big. Disdainful Stroke not being able to cancel or counter Morphs is a pretty big downside. But Cancel costing double blue is also, that's a pretty big downside. Maybe we just take an Act of Treason, actually. I don't even remember that we picked one of these up, but it might be good in this deck when we're quadruple Arrow Storm. Act of Treason's another random finisher. Actually, go Act of Treason, and we'll just be like the tap-out aggro deck where we're not holding up any mana ever for, for counters like that. Although we have enough morph cards, it's not the hardest thing in the world to hold up mana for a counter spell, and then if we don't need a counter, we can flip up a morph instead. Like, there's a reasonable way that we could be holding up counters at times so there is that to consider look at this curve when we've got the valley dashers in we're going to be forced into some bad attacks with some valley dashers but we've got quite an aggressive curve of creatures if our mana base works out yep quad arrow storm act of treason to finish things off Plus, we actually do still have big finishers, because we've got six mana, or I guess five mana five fives, five mana three three first strikes, and four fives and stuff. Tons of big stuff to flip up. So there's still plenty to do with our mana if we do hit a lot of lands. Yeah, this looks cool to me. This looks pretty fun to me. Let's make sure that mana base is good here. All three of our green cards are morphs, so we don't need green mana ever. We can always play them as three mana two twos. Now, three mana two twos are considerably weaker than the front side of all these cards, so we still want to flip them up. 
a decent amount of the time, but there's also only three green spells in the deck total. So there's only three green spells in the entire deck, and none of them need green mana to function at least a little bit. So... I think we just want like three green sources in here to keep our main two colors really consistent. And that is 16 red cards and 8 blue, 4 of which are double red cards, 5 of which actually Ash Cloud Phoenix and Quadruple Arrow Storm. So we want a lot of red sources. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 right now. Let's go 10 red sources. And for blue, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wow, well then we can put a 4th green source in easily because our mana base is so nice with the triple Swift Water Cliffs to hit blue and red mana. We get to play a three-color deck here where the two main colors, blue and red, are more consistent than your average two-color deck while still shoving a bunch of green sources in here, right? Because, like, your average two-color deck in most limited formats is going to be, like, just all basics, a 10-7 split or a 9-8 split. Our deck is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's a 10 red source... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a 10 9 split with our two main colors while having four sources of our splash color. Let's go. Love this fixing. That is going to be quite, quite valuable for us. And yeah, I could see cutting Teamer Charger for something else, seeing as we only have two other green cards in this deck. So this is really just not flipping up that often. So that's another thing to consider. Um, and if we want to do that, what do we want to do? 16 creatures, 7 on creatures. Those are fine counts either way, so I don't think we need to specifically put in a creature or specifically put in a non-creature. Let's drop the charger for something. I think we probably should do that before we completely wrap it up. I guess we could try out the one copy of Cancel. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Six morphs that cost mana to flip up, so anytime we have one of those on board and we get late game, like we get to five mana, because most of our morphs cost like five mana to flip up, um, then we get to hold up a cancel for free. Because we just flip it up. If they don't cast anything and we cancel if they do, sure. Play a cancel here, I guess, for that final card instead of that teamer charger. And... That's going to do it. We will call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today. We are a blue-red tempo aggro deck at the core, where we're going to curve out with a lot of creatures and try to slow down our opponent's blockers long enough to just kill them with a bunch of flying damage. So trip away with a bunch of Wind Scouts and an Ash Cloud Phoenix, Ice Feather Aven in the sky, as well as some really aggressive red creatures like Valley Dasher and Horde Ambushers. And when our opponents establish some big blockers to try to stop our damage, we can bounce them back with a Force Away, we can tap one and kill another with a Winter Flame, we can Active Trees in their big defensive play to just kill them with their own creature, and of course, once they fully stabilize, if they're at a low enough life total, we just start throwing a bunch of Arrow Storms right at their face to kill them anyway. So it looks like a really fun aggro deck today. We'll see how it all plays out as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for game one with Awkward Mana. We're missing one of our two core, core colors between blue and red. And we don't have any early game creatures. We've got a three mana 2-2, two, two, but I think I have to mulligan this one. Okay, concerning start from Arena there with that lag, but we will keep this hand, ditch one arrow storm, roll with this. Our mana base, because of the amount of Triomes and Duels, is really consistent, so it's rough to get hit pretty hard with the mana issues in this first draft. In this first game, I should say. We have 10 red sources and 9 blue sources in here, I believe. So we're more likely to have both of our main colors in our opening hand than your average two-color deck, so... Super rough to have to just immediately mulligan to mana with the first hand we've drawn all day.
And this hand is also pretty slow, but that is a lot of surprise damage in the end. That's 10 damage with two copies of Aerostorm, as long as we can at least chump attack with something. An Aerostorm can deal 5 to our opponent. And even if we can't chump attack with anything, it's 4 damage, so that's 8 total sitting there in hand. There's a Jeskai Wind Scout. That is exactly the kind of card I'm looking for here, so we can start getting some chip damage in here to get closer towards some arrow storms randomly winning us the game. Okay. Feel like we're enough on the defensive here. We have to attempt to trade into the sandbar. I probably should have done it last turn. But especially since we didn't draw our fifth land, so we don't even know when we'll be able to flip up that 4-5. I think we have to just take that trade there. Similarly, do we take a Wind Scout for Wind Scout trade if they accept it? Probably do. I don't think I just active trees in a Wind Scout here. I think we offer Wind Scout for Wind Scout as a trade because trying to block a prowess creature is really sketchy uh, when they're going to have all their mana up. So I don't think, if I don't attack with Wind Scout, like, I'm not going to try to block their Wind Scout with mine anyway. Because any combat trick will win that fight with the prowess to make Wind Scout naturally two toughness. And then the trick just needs to be, like, plus one, plus one, and we lose that combat. Ooh, speaking of losing, Narset is going to allow our opponents to cast... A non-creature spell out of the top four every turn for free, and she has hexproof, so we can't do anything about her. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage on board if they just buff the Scion. If they hit like an arrow storm, we're super mega dead. I do have the ability to flip up the Snowhorn Rider on blocks or attacks here. If I go attacks, I can War Shrieker have four mana up afterward, which isn't enough to actually do anything with that mana. So War Shrieker isn't really doing anything here. So what, it's like attack both. If they block, flip and kill. If they don't block, arrow storm the face and pray they don't hit a burn spell. Really, any spell kills us because the prowess. Although they need to have they need to have the mana to prowess that and to spend four mana on the scion. Isn't the most likely. We are in a rock and a hard place here. We just don't have any great options. Let's send. And pray for the best here, I think. Because trying to block is going to be super rough. If I block here, even if I flip up, they can trade with the blue mana. If I block here, they could have any combat trick because of their first strike, and we can't do anything about it. They're down to 15. All in here. Arrow storm into attack all arrow storm to kill them next turn. I have to War Shrieker and do nothing else. I'm just going to go all in. They probably got us here, but I don't think we have better lines. If we just try to play full defensive here, like our creatures are just going to get crushed. Regardless. Wow, Jeskai Ascendancy Crippling Chill? Can they cast it at instant speed? I guess it doesn't matter. They untap their whole board. So, yeah, they untapped the whole board. Oh yeah, and it casts for free, so they just crippling chill and dump all the man into Scion. Yeah, we weren't going to get through Narset. Even if I held up blocks, crippling chill on the face down so that Narset gets in and then buffed the Scion to kill us. I guess if I literally attacked not at all, I could have blocked the Wind Scout to get a turn here, maybe. Although I guess they're killing us with something else since they didn't keep buffing the Scion. We'll see what that is. They're not killing us? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm one damage off. They missed lethal, but we're still going to lose because we can't lethal back. I don't know why they didn't just kill us with Scion. That was weird. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, this is active treason river wheel aerialists. We're attacking for seven. I can also play valley dash and attack for nine. But that is all I have. Wow. All right. Well, we were... The only reason this is disappointing is that we were dead on board and they missed lethal. I would have been so much happier with this outcome if they had just killed us like they could on board. <laughs> but now it feels like they punted themselves out of the game but still won, which is sad. So, 0 oh and 1 it is as we head into game 2. Here we are for game 2. This is another pretty awkward and slow hand. But we keep it. Just one blue source for the cancel. But we can just morph the phoenix, I guess. Although we really want to play this turn four so we can cast it face up because it takes six mana to just flip it up. Yeah, we kind of have to draw well with this hand, but I don't think we mulligan this on the draw. Really looking for anything to do for three mana or less. There we go. There's a valley dasher. I was going to say, we have a good chunk of two drops in here. I think we have like five plus. All right, let's dash on in. Our opponent's on four color at least. They could be using the opulent palace just for green-blue fixing. They could be green-blue-red like us. But currently they have four colors of mana available to them. Drop an 06 to block our Valley Dasher forever. That's fine. Drop the Phoenix on turn four and start slamming in the sky. Send in both. One of these is going to get in for two points of damage. We've got the cancel up if some shenanigans are inbound, but doesn't look like it. Speaking of cancel, I guess they could have their own cancel for their three mana. Card has not been super popular in my experience so far, though, and it is significantly better to get a Phoenix down than an Ambusher. Although we can flip the Ambusher up next turn. You know what? Yeah, sure. We can morph the Ambusher to play around cancel, and then next turn we can just like reveal and cast the Phoenix. So they're still probably not arrow storming until we're gonna like kill them with it. Yeah, this looks good. Shut off the savants block, attack with everybody, somebody trades into their grizzly. Um, and then just drop the ash cloud phoenix. Feels pretty good. No one trades into the Grizzly. I was not expecting that one. Well, we certainly drew into a nice aggressive hand this time around. The opener was a bit funky, but we did get there with this board state. Now, they could have the uncommon board wipe, green, black, and three to give everybody minus two, minus two. Would be pretty good for them, but we'd keep the Ash Cloud Phoenix at least. It would come back face down. The only thing I can think of that would be really, really nerve-wracking that isn't like a rare or a mythic. Savage Punch, that's cool. Phoenix is already two for one of them. We got rid of their Savage Punch and their Grizzly. And it's still on the board. They're 
15 now. If they take... They take 8 damage, they'll die to an arrow storm. So you know what the face down is. So they trade here, stop this, take 4, go to 9 life. Play War Shrieker and Wind Scout. Mm. I could definitely see an argument that it's worth it to attack with the face down Phoenix here, but I'm going to be a little greedy about it and just not mess with it till I have the sixth mana to guarantee that I put it back on the board again if it dies. Okay, yeah, Phoenix three for one to our opponent. They had to spend three cards to kill it. And now the Arrow Storm will finish things off. Exact lethal this turn. And we will be one and one heading into game number three. Here we are for game three with a solid curve, Valley Dasher and a Glacial Stalker. Our opponent's on the play, though, which means by the time we cast Valley Dasher, um, they'll be able to probably play a 2-3 the next turn if they have three mana 2-3s in the deck, and that will not be good. Alright, offer that 2-2 two -two for 2-2 two -two trade, let's go. War Shrieker looking awesome in this hand, as long as we hit a land. We can definitely drop that Anamorph, and there's the land. That's going to be a beautiful turn four. I don't think the order of our morphs really matters much here. their own Mardu War Shrieker. Do they have their own follow-up morph? They don't. Just a 4-mana 3-3 three, three from that War Shrieker? Sad days for the Mardu War Shrieker. So War Shrieker is still good enough to stop Valley Dasher from doing its thing. Let the Valley Dasher die, or do we force away the War Shrieker to hit them with both, or do we active trees in the War Shrieker here? I feel like because we have the War Shrieker follow up play, we kind of have to just uh, send in the Valley Dasher. Just sacrifice Valley Dasher to deal two to our opponent. That's pretty fine. And that guarantees the War Shrieker mana. Get this wide board state. With cards like Act of Treason and Force Away in this deck, I think we're just basically not going to be blocking at all. Ever. Got so many ways to just surprise our opponent with a massive amount of damage output out of nowhere. Alright. Swift Kick plays pretty decently here. Just four mana to kill our three drop. Doesn't play incredibly for our opponent, doesn't play terribly for our opponent, just pretty decent. We've got nice mana to play Ambusher and Force Away. So I kind of want to do that. I think I'm jamming here, offer that trade with the Smoke Teller. They are going to take the trade. This 
Send for three, we go down to nine. Alpine Grizzly. Really active trees in that. We hope for a land here. We go active trees and hold up force away. Put them to three life. Not a land. Well, then I can just play another Horde Ambusher and play a Force Away since we dropped a 2-drop, and these trades on board are fine. Crippling Chill? Sure. Can stop them from... This is a little interesting. Can stop them from drawing the card if I bounce my own War Shrieker? And then I can recast that at a later time. I genuinely just don't think that's worth it here, though. But the Crippling Chill is actually just like a really good spell for this kind of game. Just a tempo race going on. Locking down a creature and drawing a card is pretty big in this kind of little tempo race. They've got double red for their own arrow storms. So if they have arrow storms in deck, we might just die. Because if I block the Alpine Grizzly with the Ambusher, the Ambusher will shoot me for one. To put me down to eight, the War Shrieker will hit me for three. To put me down to five, and then the arrow storm will kill me. Now we could really just use like one more land at any point here. Being able to double spell with like Active Trees and Enforce Away or Active Trees and An Ambusher would have been so good at any point. Down to six. Ooh. Delve the hooting mandrels out. It's pretty gross. I can attack in here and try to winter flame the hooting mandrels. Think I have to just tap hooting mandrels and shoot the war streaker when they get to go to combat on their turn though if we're really lucky they'll play the alpine grizzly pre-combat that would be horrible for them but if they do that then i really like this winter flame all right crack a flooded strand Grab an island. They have double blue available now if they needed that. There's double blue. See the unwritten. Put two creatures onto the battlefield? Oh boy. Out of the top eight. Four or five flying prowess. And a two one, I guess? Well, like an act of trees and a four or five flying prowess. So now we can Winter Flame the Mandrels down and shoot the other potential flyer. Tap the Hooting Mandrels, shoot the Leaping Master. And then Active Trees and the Aerialists and GG. That is Exactsies. Okay. Well, sometimes when your opponent sees the unwritten into a six-drop creature, it can actually be advantageous for you, it turns out. And we will be two and one heading into game number four. Winter Flame, massive MB MVP there. We needed to be able to stop that Mandrels from attacking to not have to block, and we needed to be able to shoot one of their blockers as well to be able to crack back for the lethal. So massive stuff from Winter Flame that game. Eh. It's a little awkward, but it's got all the colors. We'll go for it. I think our deck in general is probably just a little awkward. A lot of cards that you really want to draw at the right time. Like, you don't want an Act of Treason in your opening hand. 
you want to top deck that later. A lot of stuff like that in this deck for sure. There's Air of the Wilds. Well. Let's curve out here. This buffs up on attacks when they have a creature with power 4 or greater. They're green blue, so they could have that 3 mana plus 3 plus 3 trample trick if they declare an attack here. Okay, or they could just play a morph and then we don't have to think about whether or not we should block. Well, I'll definitely attack in to this stuff. Because Horde Ambusher shoots me in the face every time I block. And we have an Act of Treason and Arrow Storm to try to find the outracing of our opponent here. It's looking like a combat trick. Nope. I kind of like Cancel here. I guess our opponent is outracing us right now because they're attacking first, but with an Act of Treason and an Arrow Storm out of nowhere, we can win this race. I'm just going to hold up Cancel since I hit the second blue. Okay, they're stuck on mana, so they're not even doing anything that we can cancel. It's kind of awkward for us. There's no three mana morphs that eat a 2-2. Two -two. So they have to combat trick to eat our horde ambusher. Cancel that and cast another creature feels like a pretty good turn. Get the prowess extra damage here. Clear out a blocker. They're down to 11 with a 5 damage burn spell in our hand and an act of treason. We're down to 12. They're still missing those land drops it looks like. Just drop another death toucher. War Shrieker is pretty cool. We can drop that and the glacial stalker. That looks like the play to me. They're a green deck so we can probably act of treason for a lot more than just 2 damage. Soon enough. Oh, yeah. Block there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, yeah, they're already dead. Drop a Valley Dash or two, just in case that quick math was incorrect, but yeah, excellent, excellent stuff from the Act of Treason. It's an awkward card, because if you're on the defensive <laughs> and you really need to just be able to play like one more creature to trade off or something, like any creature or removal spell would be so much better than the Act of Treason, but it does steal games sometimes, and... Yeah, definitely has been functioning as a finisher for us all the way to three and one after our loss in round one. So we're up to a 50-50 record no matter what as we head into game five. Here we are for game five. Start things with the wind scout. If I top deck a forest, I am living in magical Christmas land. And then this hand is great. Two mana, two, two flyer into three mana, two on prowess flyer. But just Wind Scout into face down Aven later should be fine. Okay. Didn't hit a forest, but hitting a force away is not bad. That's a good spell to have in the hand. Ooh, Goblin Slide. Our opponent is going for spice. Bunch of non creature spells to spit out a bunch of goblins. Pretty hard to deal with a really wide board state of creatures, so Goblin Slide could do some spooky stuff to us here. Okay, there's our green source to flip the Avon up, but I think we're going to play the Wind Scout, then we're going to play the Avon face down, and the Thornwood Falls that turn. Okay. So, now we've got the awkward thing of me having five mana up next turn, so I'll drop this Snowhorn Rider instead. That is a beefier threat to flip up on our next attack. 
Ooh, and our opponent's stuck on mana. So we can just start just getting in there for damage here. Unless they kill shot, that'd be a little sad, but they don't have the kill shot, so they don't get to kill that 5-5 Trampler. And they might just be stuck on mana into death, and they are. We are 4-1. and one. Not too much of a game there, unfortunately, but still a victory for us in the end as we head into round number 6. Here we are for round 6 with a beautiful, beautiful hand. Dasher into a morph into the Ash Cloud Phoenix, and we have the Winter Flame to get stuff out of the way to get more damage in. This hand looks sick. We'll see how it plays out though. Wind Scarred Crag will start things from our opponent. They are Mardu, and there's a disowned ancestor to get in the way here, which is a little annoying. I could Winter Flame it if I really want to. But I think I'm just curving out with more threats, getting our Morph onto the board, then getting our Phoenix on the board next turn. And this Disowned Ancestor can only block one creature a turn, so get some damage in elsewhere. Well, Chief of the Edge is an excellent Winter Flame target, but for now, our trades on board are excellent, so we send in, we get two damage in, and then we play the Ash Cloud Phoenix. Yep. Here's the Phoenix. They're just going to hold a bunch of mana up here. So let's play our land pre-combat so I have access to Winter Flame and Force Away against some nonsense, and then we'll attack in, holding up these instants. And Ash Cloud Phoenix is a four-power creature, so we do get to draw a card, discard a card when we cast the Force Away. If we cast the Force Away. Swift Kick. Um, yeah, that looks like a Force Away here to counter their removal spell. Draw a card, discard. Let's discard the Tracker. The Stalker is definitely better. And they're already over it. We counter their removal spell with a Bounce spell with a wide board state, including a really spooky flyer. And they're done. We are now... Five and one in the money out of this draft, no matter what. A very positive record, no matter what. Really nice stuff from this blue-red tempo aggro build. Here we are on the play for game number seven. Five and one right now. And this is the kind of hand that I was hoping for and imagining when we built this deck, which is why some of those early hands, I'm like, well, these are all awkward. It's because we're getting the great hands all in these later games, it looks like. Like, these are above average hands for sure. This is not what I expect to draw every time. But I expect to draw hands a little closer to this than the kind of stuff we were getting in the first couple games. Jeskai student, so much for getting damage in Valley Dasher. You tried. Could drop the Horde Ambusher instead of the Wind Scout, so we shut off the student as a blocker next turn and play the Phoenix. Uh, and then they can't, like, prowess trick eat the Dasher. But I also like just getting a flying... Threat. I don't know. 
We have funky with it. Let's morph it up. Okay, there's their own morph. No attacks, yeah, so we just say no to the student on blocks and drop a phoenix. Trade into their morph here. Or deal four damage, either's pretty good for us. Cool. They're down to 14, and here's the Ash Cloud Phoenix. As long as they don't have exile removal, Ash Cloud Phoenix should be pretty gross. Once again, I don't think our deck basically ever declares a block <laughs> with the way that it's built with so many ways. With four arrow storms and an act of treason to randomly win a race unexpectedly. All right, our opponent's only hope is basically end the hostilities to destroy all creatures. They don't have that. I think we probably just kill them next turn with this arrow storm. We have six damage in the sky. Three, three, and a two, two on the ground as well. Well, this kind of looks like end the hostilities, but end the hostilities is not game over for us, at least, because we'll keep the Ash Cloud Phoenix, and if I hit any land, I flip it up. Oh no, it's Dragon Style Twins. Okay, well, they're dead then. We did it. I was about to say, I don't think... I don't think they'd want to attack with all the creatures unless they had a board wipe, but we only had two creatures on the ground. Most of our threats were in the sky anyway, and by dropping a big first striking blocker, like, they do already deal with most of the ground attacks, so makes sense, the attack from our opponent there, but with the double arrow storm, like, we are locked in for that victory, and we are now 6-1, and one, heading into the final boss with this deck, the final battle, except that we've got two rounds in the chamber to get to that seventh victory. See if we can do it as we head into round one of the final boss. Here we are for our first shot at the final battle. A little awkward for an opener, because arrow storms are kind of like our finishers here. Um... But with four arrow storms in the deck, we are kind of likely to hit some of them in the opener. Uh, plus, we didn't have a two drop in the hand to curve out particularly aggressively, but now we top decked the two drops, so that also improves the hand, which is excellent. Now we have a turn four play of just playing a morph, but our opponent has a really good start with the turn two Rattle Claw Mystic. They can play a four mana card on turn three now while they're on the play. So they have four mana while I'm just playing two mana spells. So they can easily play something too big for Valley Dasher. And things will get really gross if they do. But it looks like all they have for now is a morph. So this plays perfectly fine for us. We get to attack in. And then drop our flyer. Just trying to chip that life total down to like 10 to cast a couple arrow storms in the end game. Send in that morph, no blocks. We would definitely like to keep our flyer. There's a long shot squad which doesn't have reach until it's um until it gets a plus one plus one counter. So they don't actually stop any damage with that yet. Um, I don't really want to reveal a arrow storm here, but I do want to get more damage in off the Valley Dasher before it dies. So we're going for the Horde Ambusher for the turn. No matter what, we're playing a 3-mana 2-2, two -two, so we might as well play the 3-mana 2-2 two -two that shuts off a blocker. What is this? Whenever a creature control toughness 4 greater dies, each opponent loses 2 and you gain 2 life. Sack another creature to put a counter on it. Okay, that's big. That's big. The life gain's a problem, but they don't have any creatures with toughness 4 or greater yet anyway. So, probably attack all here because we're forced to attack with Valley Dasher. So if I don't attack all, they just eat Valley Dasher for free. At least, 
we get to trade into something by attacking with Valley Dasher and the Ambusher. Yeah, they've only got one mana up. Yeah, sure. Do this, drop the Ash Cloud Phoenix, and hopefully hit a basic so that we just attack in the sky next turn, and then uh, Arrow Storm for the kill. We've got a lot of non-basics in here, though. Hitting a tap land would make us just play a morph for now, which would be sad. It could be the difference between a win and a loss if they have some really good spells coming up. But hopefully we're in a solid enough position that we can afford to wait another turn to Arrow Storm if I do hit a tap land. Send in the long shot squad and the face down. Sure thing, no blocks. They're at 10. They're basically at 5 as soon as we have a 5th land. Drop a scion of glaciers. That's no flyers. Oof. Alright. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I need to just put them down to 4 so that if I survive another turn, they're dead. I don't even have to attack to shoot them for 4 with an arrow storm. So we drop a morph, and hopefully chump blocking with a morph is enough to stick around one more turn. If it is... That could be the final victory for this draft. Send in the whole team? Okay, not the Rattleclaw Mystic. Let's, uh, let's throw this face down under theirs, and that could get them to, like, tap out for that. Although I could die to, like, become immense. No, they don't. They only have one card in Graves. So they can't, like, combat trick with that. They spend one, two, three, four blue to buff this, then this is eight damage to me. They'd need a one mana way to get another four. Yeah, I think we do this. Cool, down to seven. We got rid of a glacial stalker. And they're holding their mana up. Well, they have to spend some mana to not die on board, so. Let's see if we can get them to tap out into just casting an arrow storm. When they don't have cancel mana up. There we go. There's the tap out. Shut off our power. We deal zero. But here's the arrow storm to put them to negative one. And that is seven and one. I believe our first trophy run in this draft format, our first seven win run. We've got a six win run or two, but haven't quite made it to that max prize out. So feels pretty good. This was a sweet deck. We just got an excellent mythic rare and ran with that from our pack one pick one. Got into a pretty aggressive archetype to really, really get that extra value from getting all that extra flying damage in there pretty quickly. So yeah, I really liked the game plan of just Jeskai Wind Scouts to chip in for a bunch of damage, and then Arrow Storms and Act of Treasons to kill our opponent once they are lower. Certainly worked out pretty well for us in the majority of those games. And it's a pretty fun deck all around. Really liked our, our mana fixing as well, so that the green splash was basically free. That was pretty awesome. And the Valley Dashers did have to chomp attack and die for no reason sometimes. But they got quite a bit of early damage in for us as well, which was nice. So really solid stuff from pretty much everything in the deck. Quite enjoyed this run. So we'll grab our 2200 gems, our six bonus packs of Cons of Tarkir, and that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.